Bungie is officially done from Moist Critical. Let's see what he's got to say. I'm sure this will be spicy. You see all the discourse around Bungie and the layoffs that occurred? That, I saw the headlines, but I haven't looked into it. I know they laid off like a ton of people for some reason, including some like OGs, but I don't know why. As I continue to investigate this past week at Bungie and the circumstances that led to mass layoffs and reported delays, I've learned new information to paint a clearer picture. After a lengthy conversation with someone with inside knowledge of the situation, there's new info about how the layoffs happened, the staff reaction since then, and the state of Destiny 2 in the final shape. Management said other levers were looked at to avoid layoffs. When employees asked if one lever was executive compensation, they were told no, and that it would not happen at the company. Post-publication, Bungie responded saying that CEO Pete Parsons and some other executives previously forfeited annual bonuses before the layoffs, but staff was not informed this happened until yesterday. The sum total of the bonuses given up is not clear. Interesting. Internally, really no one is blaming Sony for this, even management. Some employees were told that it, if the Sony buyout did not happen, that with current Destiny 2 performance, the studio itself would have been in jeopardy if they were still independent. I mean, it's almost like if you just put a little more effort into the game, <laughs> Destiny 2 would be in a better state and maybe not struggling. It's very interesting that the studio would be in jeopardy if they were independent. And so Sony had to buy them for 3.6% billion dollars like when you hear that price tag 3.6 billion dollars you think bungie is killing it like good job bungie like billions of dollars holy crap bungie is absolutely doing amazing right but then they're like the studio would have been in jeopardy if they were still independent like wait a minute so you're telling me that you like needed that deal like you guys were potentially going to crash and burn without that deal that's actually that's mind-blowing that's an entirely different perspective shift on that sony deal in my mind I don't know if I'm the only one that felt that way when they saw that, but for me, that was a mind-blowing revelation. I always thought it was the opposite way. And then, yeah, Sony literally had to pay off Bungie's debts, says Speed, and that's actually an interesting part, as well as they had to buy the shares from all of the employees that had been there for so long, right? So employees acquire shares of the company, so they had to buy those shares from them. So we don't know who had shares, who didn't, who profited the most from that, but they had to buy those shares from them. I think it was like literally $1.2 billion of it was spent on that. And they said that when the layoffs happened, that that $1.2 billion was already dried up. It's crazy to think about how fast they have burned through that money. And this also brings in mind, does anyone remember that Microsoft quote recently where Microsoft was considering buying Bungie, but they said they wouldn't buy Bungie because that Bungie was had way too much of a risk of having a, what was a high burn through rate? Damn. Microsoft actual galaxy brains out here. Microsoft's out there picking up the big players, got Activision and all that. And then Sony's kind of picking up the scraps and the the stuff that Microsoft doesn't want to acquire. That's crazy to think about, right? That's very crazy to think about. How does the CEO still have his job? The CEO took a pay cut. I know that people will blame management for the 45% loss in revenue, which is very fair. Like I would put a good majority of that blame on them as well. We don't know what happens behind closed doors at Bungie. I really just feel like Bungie needs to have a new direction and new invigoration. Everything kind of went downhill after they were like, we can't have over delivery. You know what I'm saying? As soon as they were like, we have to really focus on not over delivering. They created this new baseline of how much they can get away with giving us. And they're like, okay, well, we got away with giving you this much and you still bought it. So now we're going to give you this much. And it's like this much. And then next season and then next season and then next year and then next year and then eventually we're down here and we're like so what are you even giving us anymore you know and what are we paying for we're paying more money now for 25 percent the amount of stuff we usually get what is going on here they've reached that breaking point right some stuff is definitely gonna have to change side note if you're thirsty from playing destiny 2 all day use discount code lucky10p to save some money on g fuel they are the ones that said they don't want to over deliver because it sets expectations too high who said that bungee during one of their uh, it was a GDC was conference. It? It wasn't really a it was conference. Justin it was Truman. more like a board meeting kind of thing. But apparently, they said they don't want to over deliver because it sets the community's expectations too high. Or something to that effect. Which is actually pretty funny when you think about it. There's a limit to how much you can deliver, right? But what you should be wanting to do is you should be wanting to deliver more content every season and every year, more epic experiences. It's kind of just the general concept of, I guess, just capitalism, right? You've got a billion dollar company in America. You're going to have, you're going to be subjected to capitalism, whether you want to do it or not. If you don't do it, other companies will, but you need to just keep trying to deliver more and hiring more employees and deliver more content and hire more employees and deliver more until 
until you break that threshold of we literally cannot make more every season there's multiple new strikes new pvp maps new exotics you know what i'm saying like we just gotta keep raising the ceiling as high as you can till the point where you have maybe something like this maybe you have to lay off some employees because you've hired a thousand employees over the last couple years that would be acceptable we'd be like okay well bungie keeps pushing the boundaries bungie keeps trying to make the game better make the game bigger make the game more impressive we love that about bungie you know that's what we should be saying right we shouldn't be like bungie just keeps trying to lower the bar and give us the bare minimum and see if we still buy and then there's comes a point where they're just like they'll just buy anything you know next season this new exotic is literally just a, a pile of and they'll just they'll buy it anyway they'll just buy it. <laughs> We don't want to get to that point, right? I feel like we've, we're almost there. Confirmed among every top employee, but at least some D2 director, Joe Blackburn, is not really considered to be one of the corporate culprits here for how things went down. The expensive new building was a separate project that likely would, have not, would not have saved jobs given the context of when that was drafted and when work started. Similarly, the $1.2 billion in employee retention from Sony was spent long ago, often on buying out employees' Bungie shares, which then went to Sony. There's nothing left in that pot to avoid layoffs, which wasn't that which wasn't what it was meant for this late in transition. The trend line of spending on the game over time made the current year's revenue estimates somewhat logical, so yes, the 45% miss is important and that was not and was not necessarily some widely inflated projection. However, nearsighted ended up being there's been real damaging drop post-lightfall in terms of player engagement and spending, and lightfall sold very well. Employees are extremely angry with leadership now and have often communicated that publicly in meetings Bets were made that it did not pay off. That did not pay off, but those who made them remain in the company. A fact lost on no one. What a disaster! What a fucking disaster! Sad to see what's happened to Bungie over the years. It's their own fault. It's not like this was some inevitability of nature or some shit. They've been sinking themselves. They're the only ones to blame. I hate three four three equally. Well, three four three is at least turning it around. 343 is finally making Halo Infinite good. I still haven't played Season 5, but most people really like it. So, 343 is improving, Bungie's just getting worse. Who cares about optional microtransactions? Why, why care? Man, you are part of the problem. Because then it becomes that's, then it becomes the whole driving force behind the game. Look at Destiny 2's current state. They put all their eggs into the Eververse basket. Yeah, it's cosmetic, doesn't really affect me, but I mean, it is a bad game decision for the overall health of a game when that becomes their primary goal. I don't know why you wouldn't recognize that. You see what's going on with Bungie? Yeah, I was talking about that a little bit ago. Just a disaster of a company. They really fucking blew it. Did you see the part where the devs literally begged to improve the game for players and tone down the microtransactions? I did not see that. Where was that? This one's pretty spicy. Bungie staff reportedly begged for changes to retain Destiny 2 players. It was an estimated 100 employees that were laid off. Oh god, yeah, including lower than expected pre-orders from the upcoming expansion to Final Shape. Player sentiment was at an all-time low. This issue has been flagged to leadership repeatedly for months prior to the layoffs, with employees begging for necessary changes to win players back. God, that's, that's rough. So fucking sad. No, I haven't seen all the details. I only read one article about it at the beginning of the stream just to kind of get the gist of what exactly happened. But I don't know all the particulars. I just know they laid off a lot of employees, some of them being OGs as well. Do you think there's any improvement for the... Do you think there's any hope for improvement on the state of AAA games in the foreseeable future? Um, not really. They have to bring down the cost to produce them. Otherwise, it's only going to continue to spiral out of control and there's going to be more and more emphasis placed on microtransactions to try and make up the cost that it may, that it cost them to produce it games take longer than ever to make they cost more than ever to make thus you can't just rely on game sales you need like perpetuity you need players buying more and more and more in order to make it profitable so until that amount comes down and that time it takes to create games comes down i don't think it gets better why don't you use ad block anymore because every goddamn article on the internet now yes. like every publication yes doesn't let you see it without ad block being off so i've just decided to just play ball for now fuck it yeah honestly it's more trouble than it's worth to just turn on a stronger ad block other glaring thing is that according to them they missed their pro projected revenue by 45 percent even though lightfall had a super high population just goes to show how to how out of touch the suits are now they're claiming they want final shape to be better than forsaken hence the all but confirmed delay yeah cool I'm sure 
I, I'm sure they're going to somehow make it better. That delay will change everything. That's all they needed. I have I'll no soon. hope for Destiny 2. I think it's kaput. Rip. I don't see them turning it around. But the final shape. Because of so much potential. Well, it's always the thing. Destiny the 2 is the game that just has limitless potential that they outright refuse to realize. They are so against just making it good. It blows my mind. It really blows my mind. I feel like we've we've gone around this... We've done this dance so many times, though, that Bungie can revive it. It just requires the right work culture. I know that people are going to be like, lucky, the copium. I would say that the right culture is what they said, where they said they want to make a product better than Forsaken, better than the Taken King. So when, when you think of the Taken King and when it came out, when you think of Forsaken and when it came out, they want the final shape to be better than those. And that is the right mentality. That is the right work culture they need when they get, when they clock in they need to think like a simpleton to some degree right taken king gave us this many new exotics can we deliver the same amount of new exotics in the final shape can we deliver more new exotics taken king gave us this many strikes i believe taken king gave us four strikes can we deliver four new strikes in this can we deliver five new strikes in the final shape can we deliver five new strikes you know because Taken King was four new strikes. Think in those ter types of terms, and people will be wildly impressed when they consider buying the final shape. When they know that there's going to be a new strike every season, a new Crucible map every season, stuff like that nature. And people say, well, what about, sounds like dev crunch and stuff like that. Well, you can hire more employees to make these things happen right? And it is possible to do these things, right? And maybe they need a bigger dev team. Maybe they don't have anywhere near the, the dev team size to pull this off. And if that's the case, then they are truly doomed, but it'll always just have like a sizable audience, but it definitely is not looking bright at this rate. We'll see. We shall see what the future will hold. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe with notifications on if you enjoyed the video, smash the like button and click on the screen here to watch another video from the channel. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Later. And if you're feeling thirsty out there, make sure to use code LUCKY10P to save some money on G Fuel. Also, make sure you're following me on Twitch and Kick. I go live all the time playing Destiny 2. Lastly, make sure you're following me on X, Instagram, and TikTok where I deliver Destiny 2 news to you daily. I appreciate all the followers out there.